Evidence shows that his troops, Battalion 55, his troops suppressed these Chang rebellions with heavy artillery weapons and naval boats. And his direct military superiors, of course, were Heng Samrin and ultimately Saupim. Then the alleged breakup uh, or the displacement of the charm. The co-prosecutors also argued that the transfer of charm residents from uh, the Mekong River area in late 1975 was a direct response uh, to the charm rebellion. And his evidence, um, so they say, proceed the case in tension to persecute the charm. However, the East Zone Telegram discussing the transfer, that is, uh, E3 slash 154, shows that both Khmer and Khmer were transferred. Of course, the question is how could this be uh, persecution against the charm uh, when they were treated the same uh, as Khmer? Khmer. Moreover, no evidence proves that the transfer was in any way linked to religion or the charm rebellions. Quite the contrary, there is evidence showing that this was part of the country's uh, reconstruction efforts to move people to less populated areas uh, with more arable land and food. Therefore, the fact that some charm may have been displaced does not establish beyond reasonable doubt that charm as such were targeted and discriminated against. On the contrary, they were treated just like anyone else. And in the absence of objective and reliable evidence that the CPK had a policy to persecute or destroy charm people, co-prosecutors resort to misrepresenting evidence to support their case. In fact, these misrepresentations are too numerous to be discussed in the limited time that we have today. Uh, let me just give uh, two examples. First, the co-prosecutors claim that Salas Ahmad Ahmad Van Mat Van Mat said that K. Pauk identified the charm um, as traitors, traitors that must be smashed. Yet, what he actually testified was that he only heard K. Pauk talking about, quote-unquote, purging the mobile unit forces, quote, who betrayed the Angkara. Um, regardless of, the, of their ethnicity, whether charm or Khmer, unquote. Second example, the co-prosecutors claim that Prasut, the former Kampong District Secretary, testified of an order to burst the charm. But in fact, that's what she told um, the co-investigating judge, international co-investigating judge, before, before her testimony in court. However, during her in-court testimony, which was in closed session, so no one from the public could have seen it. But during her in-court testimony, she said that the order from the sector was not to smash all the charm, but to quote-unquote purge bad elements who opposed the revolution or otherwise caused problems. Namely, to take corresponding measures such as arrest them again, such as arrest against them. And she said, as she called it, good people among the charm, that is, those not involved in illegal activities, were untouched. In fact, some of those charms got married to each other with uh, authorization. 
no grob ka grob but the co prosecutors not only misrepresent evidence but also ask for speculation have a look at paragraph uh, 554 uh, they, rep, um, they, pre they present a 1975 radio broadcast praising the child's freedom to practice their religion as an example of persecution and extermination policy and similarly they ask you to interpret the sentence and I quote the Chan race was totally exterminated by the Vietnamese, unquote. As true, beyond reasonable doubt, of the, and I quote again, consciousness of the CPK leaders and their knowledge of ex or expectation that there would be no more Chan in the country. It is Mr. President, extremely inappropriate that the co-prosecutors, who are, after all, supposed to be uh, officers of the of the of law, uh, searching for the truth, blatantly ignore the presumption of innocence and their burden to prove uh, beyond reasonable doubt. And there, as I said, responsibility for ascertaining the truth. I find it very inappropriate. Mr. President, we do have evidence regarding the CPK's view of the charm, but co-prosecutors ignored this evidence just because the evidence did not fit in what we call the Manichaean narrative. Because what the evidence shows is that the CPK always considered the charm the same as crime. In June 1975, the Phnom Penh radio referred to Chan as, quote, unquote, Islamic brothers who were helping build the country. As my um, client said this morning, uh, Mr. President, um, one of the most important CPK members uh, was Mat Lee. Uh, a, a child Muslim. He had a very high position within the CPK. And during his 17 April 70, 1976 speech, Pol Pot referred to Kampanchean people, which included quote, both ethnic Khmer and other nationalities living throughout the country. And and another example is DK document called uh, DK document called Social Class Struggle in Cambodian Society E3 slash 1233. Generally speaking, various ethnic people are in the present class. However, like Khmer, Champa ethnic group and Thai are divided into many classes according to economic status. And of course, also this document unequivocally shows the charm and command were considered the same. <coughs> However, instead of relying on the original document, the co-prosecutors in paragraph uh, 1099 of their brief um, refer to an unofficial translation of this document in Ben Kinan's book, which, uh, due to translation errors, conveys a completely opposite message. Now, of course, this is another unacceptable dishonest misrepresentation of the evidence. And finally, the co-prosecutors have failed to present even one piece of reliable evidence to show that Nguyen Chia held any negative views towards charm for Islamic religion. Yet the local prosecutors seek a conviction of Nguyen Chia for genocide and religious persecution against charm. Of course, such convictions are impossible without uh, establishing genocidal and persecutory intent. And to fill in uh, the huge evidentiary gap, the co-prosecutors again resort to misrepresenting evidence, claiming, for instance, that Ban Sik testified that Nguyen Chia ordered the killing of Chan. 
bàn bị chia ở sầm lấp chân chân chạm. However, if you check his evidence, you will see that he never said that what Bond said was that he did not know he did not know that he did not know about others regarding Chang. He was very clear that he did not know about others regarding Chang. He was very clear that he did not know about others regarding Chang. He was very clear that he did not know about others regarding Chang. He was very clear that he did not know about Nguyen Chia, who was in charge of party trading, might also have issued orders, he said. And he said, and Nguyen Chia said, he heard from others that Nguyen Chia mentioned the smashing of KGB and CIA agents during training. But Don Zik never said that Nguyen Chia mentioned hearing, but he heard about orders to kill Chang. He never said, Heard Nguyen Chia say this. It's therefore shocking that the court prosecutors dare to misrepresent the evidence in this way. Mr. President, this concludes the first part of my presentation in relation to the charm. Let me now explain how the crime-based evidence does also not support the core prosecutor's argument that the existence of a policy can be deduced from the alleged systematic pattern of crimes. Now, the core prosecutors allege that religious persecution against Chang is evidenced by the um, suppression of Chang cultures, which, including, which included the, the clothing requirements uh, that women had to cut their hair, that the mosques were closed, or that people had to eat pork. Again, first we have to say that there is no evidence that such measures were pursuant to any uh, official order of policy. Or policy. And secondly, these measures uh, have nothing to do with religion. Instead, they either related to uh, the CPK's ideology, such as uh, equality, revolution, and also gender equality, um, or had to do with practical necessities. For instance, women cutting their hair short like men was related to the idea of equality, gender equality. Because Khmer women, as you can see in all the footage, did the same. Similarly, mosques were not torn down or transformed into uh, other use because of religion. Rather, it was due to the huge shortage of construction material needed for rebuilding the country. Various non-religious constructions were subjected to the same measures, either dismantled for its material or transformed into hospitals or warehouses. Regarding pork, the shortage of food made it impossible to always guarantee every dietary need. Pork was often the only protein available. However, providing pork to people was not a way to persecute charm. The evidence simply shows that most charm would choose other proteins, such as beef or fish, or when such was not available, choose to eat rice with salt instead of consuming pork. Moreover, none of these measures uh, targeted the charm. Quite on the opposite, the population of any origins was equally subjected to them. In areas where such measures were in place. Mr. President, we do not wish to undermine the suffering uh, which not being able to exercise certain aspects of one's religion may have caused. However, uh, international law recognizes that at times of war or emergency, certain restrictions affecting the manifestation of one's religion can be imposed. The court prosecutors rely extensively on statements which simply state that, quote-unquote, all charm people were killed, most charm people disappeared, and so on. But this is, of course, insufficient to establish any alleged killing or disappearance beyond reasonable doubt.
Moreover, it doesn't explain why the people allegedly disappeared or died. It does not explain uh, whether the very reason for their disappearance or alleged killing was that the victim was charmed. The alleged separation of charm from Khmer detainees at Free Village um, is based on evidence uh, of two witnesses uh, who both had serious credibility issues. And one of them even admitted that she lied about certain things in order to bring what she believes uh, is justice to her community. She actually admits that she was, quote-unquote, uh, lying for justice. Contrary to their evidence, uh, two other witnesses uh, testified that the order was to uh, quote unquote, purge rebels who betrayed, regardless of whether they were charmed or commanded. The co-prosecutors also argue that uh, quote, in order to thoroughly carry out CPK's extermination policy, unquote, Kampung Sim district cadre Yu Vang had to draw and verify lists to make sure that all charms were identified, as in paragraph um, 1027 of the brief. But again, Mr. President, the co prosecutors misrepresent the evidence. Yuvan did not testify of an order to draw and verify lists to identify all the charms. Rather, what she said was that Sector Secretary Ta'an ordered her to verify the lists to make sure that they were accurate about who were quote-unquote good and who were quote-unquote bad elements. She also testified that not all those on the list quote-unquote disappeared. As we have, I believe, extensively demonstrated in our brief, where individuals who happen to be charmed were arrested, interrogated, or detained, it was a result of an in itself uh, legitimate security measures. It had to do with the individual actions, not with the religion or ethnicity. And a mutually corroborating evidence of Prakyut, Yuvan, Bansik, and Salzamat shows that security measures were only directed towards people suspected of crimes, regardless of their religious or ethnic identity. Mr. President, I conclude um, there was no CPK policy of political or religious persecution. There was no campaign of genocide or extermination. Any measures which may have adversely impacted Cham people were measures which had been applied to all citizens, irrespective of race, political views, or religion. Rather than being discriminated against, Cham were in fact treated just like every other PK. Citizen. And the same applies to the treatment of Vietnamese people, which I will now uh, address, Mr. President. And also, in respect of the Vietnamese people, the co-prosecutors argue that a genocide, uh, extermination and racial persecution was committed against the Vietnamese. However, this was never the case. In this session, um, of this morning, my colleague and I my colleague Mr. Van and I will explain why the co-prosecutor's case is based on, again, nothing but speculation, exaggeration, and misrepresentation of the evidence. The truth is simple. There was no direct or indirect plan of the CPK to commit crimes against Vietnamese civilians as a mere result of their race, ethnicity, or nationality. There is 
really no single piece of credible evidence <laughs> where Nunchia is calling for the destruction, extermination, or persecution um, of Vietnamese nationals. There is simply no official CPK document calling for the extermination of Vietnamese civilians. Show me one, Mr. Prosecutor. There is none. Any references to Vietnamese enemies, of course, relate to military enemies, not civilians, as I will explain in a few minutes. This present, the presentation of our arguments in respect of the Vietnamese will be uh, divided into two sessions. I will first be discussing official uh, CPK documents evidence from various cadres, as well as the specific involvement um, of uh, Nguyen Chia, which all show that was never, that there was never a genocidal policy against Vietnamese. As indicated this morning, my colleague Liz Sovan so will then discuss the allegations of uh, deportation. And he will also demonstrate that the pattern of events in reality does demonstrate uh, does not demonstrate the existence of a systematic and consistent pattern of crimes towards the Vietnamese. It seems, of course, very obvious, um, but as a preliminary note, I still have to remind everyone um, in the last nine and a half years of the importance of the historical context in which the alleged crimes against Vietnamese took place. There is one essential fact that we must keep in mind at all times. There was an international armed conflict between Democratic Cambodia and the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. For two hours last Friday, I have been discussing uh, Vietnamese aggression. There were indeed enemies here, but the enemies here were troops acting on behalf of the opposing side in the war, Vietnam. Of course, uh, those included Vietnamese soldiers. We also included individuals who acted as um, proxy of the Vietnamese government or collaborators and who undertook actions threatening uh, the national security of democratic Cambodia. Mr. President, international humanitarian law recognizes that individuals uh, who act as spies or otherwise threaten a state's national security on behalf of a military opponent are not considered civilians. They are considered as de facto members of the opposition. In legal terms, uh, they are, quote, unquote, taking an active part in the hostilities. And as such, of course, they become legitimate military clients. And why is this important? It's important because Nguyen Chia is accused of having committed uh, crimes against uh, innocent civilians uh, in an attempt to destroy them on the basis of their race. However, as I will explain, the evidence on which the poor prosecutors rely relates entirely, almost entirely, to Vietnamese soldiers and individuals participating in hostilities. Entirely. They were not innocent civilians, quote-unquote innocent civilians. They were military opponents, and they were not victims of genocide. Therefore, 
The co-prosecutors argue that both numerous witnesses and other sources confirm that there was a broader CPK policy to have only one race or nationality command and to eliminate and no longer recognize the country's ethnic minorities. However, it comes as no surprise that they offer no credible evidence to support this allegation. Rather than acting objectively as ministers of justice for ascertaining the truth, co-prosecutors again misrepresent evidence, take citations out of their context and rely largely on out-of-court statements. And also here, Mr. President, they rely heavily on uh, alleged experts and publications which contain second-hand hearsay and have not been tested by the defense. The reality Your Honor, is, that, uh, is that not only is there no direct evidence of a CPK policy to destroy or persecute Vietnamese nationals, to the contrary, there is objectively reliable evidence that the CPK never intended to do so. And there was always a clear distinction between Vietnamese soldiers and Vietnamese civilians. First of all, there is nothing in the official CPK documents, in official CPK policy, calling for the destruction, extermination, or persecution of the Vietnamese people. Mr. President, I ask you to have a close look um, at the 1976 CPK's four-year plan. I ask you to, to scrutinize all Revolutionary flags, the Revolutionary Youth, uh, the Black Paper, any official CPK statement available on the case. Please read carefully the statements made by Nunchia. You will not find one single reference any question of race, purity, uh, you will not find uh, any call for explanation. In fact, you will not even find in any of these uh, CPK documents a single statement referring to the Vietnamese people in negative terms. Or any call. What the co-prosecutors are asking your honours to do is to when conclude that yes, every now, reference to uh, uh, quote-unquote uh, in the CPK publications uh, 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 refers to the Vietnamese people. Of course, that is Vietnam. absurd speculation, um, um, as my colleague Sivsovana explained to you last week. Sivsovana, man, look, like, how, can how can any use of the term uh, enemy be a specific reference to the Vietnamese people and the same term allegedly refers to about 31 categories um, of enemies. Um, how can the, re the requisite legal standard for genocide, namely that the group be specifically identified and targeted, be met by the use of such generic terms? The co-prosecutors argue that and I quote, the CPK actively sought to incite animosity against uh, ethnic Vietnamese, and of course. And their case is based on the assumption that any reference uh, to the word uh, to an incitement for genocide. Mr. President, as you know, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. Uh, Cambodian or outside this courtroom yes, do However, when looked at as a whole, and objectively, the CPK uh, clearly distinguished the members of the Vietnamese military 
Olympia or its political and military leaders. People fighting the war on behalf of Vietnam by spying or sabotaging on the one hand and Vietnamese civilians on the other hand. What prosecutors are attempting to do is to argue that any reference to Vietnamese soldiers equals a reference to Vietnamese people. But it is crystal clear that all the documents and statements it refers to talk about Vietnamese soldiers, Vietnamese military. For instance, uh, E3 slash M46, the July 1978 flag on which the Pope is heavily relying. That document refers to the quote-unquote Yun enemy, which, uh, quote, swallowed um, Unquote Cambodia Campuchia. and talks about uh, defeating the Yun. Military military and this would have been clear to um, the co prosecutors had they not quoted the documents so selectively.